All right, so the answer to yesterday's question of what are we gonna do today? We're moving grain. Where to start? Uh, so the, the little transfer auger over there, uh, that is the witch bin. We had cool canola in one bin. Anyways, we transferred it out, loaded it into that bin over there. Now that that's empty, because that bin's got aeration, we're empty in this bin, which does not have aeration and has warm canola. And we're gonna put it over there. I'm starting to heap up. So dad pulled peas out of where the transfer auger is. I'm hoping he got them all out of there because we're gonna put his peas on the top of, I believe it's this bin which has my peas, which we're hoping to get rid of in the next couple of days to free up that bin because we want those two, both of those bins empty so that I can haul canola from two bins that are a bit warm down south to here, put them on air for a couple of days and probably move them back north, or sorry, south, unless I get the call from the elevator. They said possibly next week they could start taking some October canola. So, yeah, it's kind of organized chaos around here right now. But we won't be combining today. We're taking a day off. We're going to let that canola cure down. We're actually probably running a couple hours, well, definitely a couple hours behind where we expect it to be today when we uh the first probably i don't know 6 30 quarter to seven me and dad put our heads together said, okay this is what we need to do a goes to b b goes there this is da, 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 kind of thing well the first step that we had to do was fix the tractor because we went to move it and all of a sudden we noticed it was leaking pretty bad. Okay. Well, there's a auxiliary. Here, let's take a quick look, I'll show you. So you see, this hose, that's hot. There's an auxiliary setup in here. It's a block that extends it, and it takes, this is actually the return for it. This is the pressure side of it. And the point of that, just so that we can run this. So it goes here, so that you can control the bucket with these auxiliaries and you're not limiting yourself. So it wasn't necessarily a hard job, but it sure was awkward and dirty. So yeah, we're kind of behind the gun right now, but we've got nothing else on the go. Uh, really we could be disking, probably. It's probably too hot to be spraying right now. Uh, I think there's a little bit that could be sprayed tonight. We're not really worried about that because if it could be sprayed tonight, it could be sprayed tomorrow morning. Either one's not a big deal. Uh, so we're going to have another, I'm going to fill this up pretty good way beyond legal but it's literally going from there to that bin the the one that does not have the auger so we're gonna hump her up pretty good we'll pull two loads out of this that should get most of it and then we'll uh, put it on air for a bit and then we got to go down and get my lentils and they're gonna go in that itty bitty fertilizer bin on the other side, directly in line with that spout. So yeah, we got a lot on the go. Probably gonna have moved, if everything goes well, we might move upwards of 15,000 bushel today, but that's gonna be a lot. I don't think we'll get there. But this is my 
fourth load on this and I've humped them all up pretty good so we're talking 6,000 bushels already dad's got another probably 800 no you can't get 800 on that thing but probably 660 on that thing and it's like noon maybe one just before one o'clock so a lot of moving a lot of managing grain we needed a day like today uh, just to get ahead, get things organized, get things cooled down. It's one less thing to worry about. And, you know, let the crop ripen a hair. Give the guys a day off, all that stuff. Well, we're getting there. It's now 7 o'clock. Uh, I have to do some rough math here. But this is going to be my last load for the day. This will fill the bin. I still have 10 minutes, maybe a hair less, to fill this. It'll take me probably 20 minutes to get up to the other farm, 20 minutes to unload, and then I have to come back because my truck is over at the field a mile away that way. And then go back into town. So I got a good hour almost hour and a half by the time I'm done so that means I'm gonna have an early night as long as nothing breaks that chain is rattling away and there's, uh, there's a really good chance at some point it's just gonna bind up and blow something up it's already blown a couple holes through we don't know if that's actually it's ejected pieces or it's just the way the chain slapped but we got to run it my auger over there is still waiting on a piece that's been back ordered for most of two months now i don't know if it's back ordered misordered or just overall incompetent likely a combination but i need this piece because you can see, it should look like a regular gear, like a chain cog, and it don't. It is banged right out. Oh, here I am talking to you, and I gotta move the truck. And just to add to the rest of my night, We've got a bit of a standoff going here. We have somebody, one, two, three, four. I think I know who that is, but somebody else is coming with headers going the opposite way. And nothing productive is really happening right now. There's a combine actually out in front of me. Okay, I think these guys on the right are going. You probably can't see them through my bug-soaked windshield. There they come. Oop. Put it in the right range. Okay. Uh, crap. All right, all right. We are, we're on our last, we'll call it field, but it's, it's actually three fields that really you can divvy up into five. Um, so we have it. I'll give a quick, quick rundown. We have a section here, but it is broken up at a. It's like an 18 degree angle off north by the railroad tracks, and on top of that, it's broken east west. 
right about here. This is my dad's side. This is my uncle's side. I rent off my uncle. And then, so then, we, so we have a big field, another big field, and then about um, three quarters of a mile that way. There's a small field. So the small field is 60 acres. It's surrounded by pasture. That's uh, mine alone. Or I guess my uncle's, but mine alone. Then we have the big field, which is like, so like I said, that's, I think it's 58 acres over there. And then these two are pretty close to the same, but I have about 35 acres on that side and the rest is dad's. And then this, which is about 80, 85 acres is all dad's. And then the rest is mine. So dad's running grain cart today. We're just getting rolling. We took the day off yesterday to move grain, let this stuff dry down. Seems like it was a good move. I just realized I don't have super steady on, but uh, I'll have to turn that on. So you can see Jim's in the background. That's dad in the Delta track, Doug in the combine. That's the 8240. We've been having some issues with mine and we figured it out that, uh, yeah, I need to. Okay, I got the Super Steady on now. So my combine, ever since we put the Contour Buddies on, it's had a hard time lifting the header. You know, it's an extra few hundred pounds of weight. We didn't really think it that much through, but We've noticed that it's really sluggish and struggles to pick up the header a lot. So we've been piddling around with it. We had youngs come out. They took a look at it. I still think it's not quite right because it's showing a, a preset header lift pressure. And I'm guessing that's the maximum that it allows. Problem is, my header has the low or not low, but smaller lift cylinders. They're 75 mil and the next ones up are 100 mil or 90 mil or something like that. And they're meant for the bigger headers. Seems like the 135 with the contour buddies is just a hair too heavy. So what we did is we took the, the hitch off of mine. Seems to, seems to be helping a little bit. You know, the hitch only weighs about, I don't know, 100 pounds seems to be about the difference it needs to do okay because when we're doing it in peace when we have the buddy wheels off it lifts up pretty pretty average a little slower than normal pretty average but you put the buddy wheels on and it really really struggles so that's what we're working on over here you can see maybe you can maybe you can't down there is the semi and the disc dad's truck and i don't know if you can quite see the grain truck yeah you can i'm on grain cart or grain truck duty today quite cool last night which is good because we had the aeration fans running so they would have you know there's only 3500 bushel in those bins they would have cooled down in a hurry uh, it was three when i woke up this morning at 5 30 in town and dad said it was two at his place with frost on the shingles and just a kiss of frost on the grass. Nothing that we're really worried about. It's actually almost exactly on time for when we should be expecting to see some frost. You can't be upset about that. It's not gonna hurt anything, at least that little bit. Um, it'll probably help bring some stuff on but the biggest thing is we needed to cool down some grain. So, my Durham, done. My other field of Durham, done. There's, uh, well that's the field further up, not this one, another mile up, is our canola down here, half, two thirds of it I guess. There's about 550 acres, 540 acres that way, all done. There's some, uh, my uncle's there, what was it, 260 acres, all done. 
and my lentils over there all done except the kosher patches we're just gonna let them dry up a bit I might try and rent a, a quick clean or something like that to just run those through knock out some dockage and the kosher in the meantime I'm ripping back up north I'm gonna get the combines fueled up we have to replace the winch on the bagger because it crapped out and I'm guessing we probably won't get going until about 11 today because it's quite calm, quite wet, and quite cool. My uh, my toes are actually wet because I was stomping around in the grass. They got wet and cold, so. Uh, here's what we got to look forward to today. A whole bunch of Durham. Interesting little development is uh, we lost the contour buddy. Uh, see if I can pull up. You might be able to see where it is or where it happened. Or was it right above? Probably I parked right on top of it. You, you can see a spot that there was a bit of a scuff. Oh yeah, right there. Anyways, lost the contour buddy. Had a, I thought dad said broken bolt but then we looked at it and it was just it backed off the nylock on it and i remember when we put them on i was really kind of like wow there's only one of these and it's a nylock i would have preferred it to be a stover luckily we didn't lose anything that fell off and maybe maybe 50 80 feet up the row Mom happened to be out riding with Dad. She was just walking the row and she found the, the washer plate. So, uh, yeah, good luck finding the nut out there, though. So, we're only two miles from home. Dad's running home, trying to find another nut, maybe another washer, maybe a log washer. We'll beef it up. But I think for next year, we're... Or, not, maybe not even next year. Maybe next chance I get to run to town, I'll grab some, a handful of stovers. Cause I like, I hate dealing with them, but I like the way they lock. They do not budge. And oddly enough, like we checked toolboxes on the combine, my truck, dad's truck, on this Delta track, we didn't check the other combine. We did not have a single half inch nut. Usually you got one bouncing around in a toolbox somewhere. Nope. We got some 716s, we had some 5.8s, we had a whole whack of 3.8s. And I think we had one that was close, but I it was a metric thread or something. Oh well. Uh, pretty simple fix. Alright, lucky for us, nothing bent. Just one lost nut. So, crisis averted. Well, I'm not sure what happened here, but it can't be good considering he just stopped in the middle. It's bone dry. Uh, this might suck. All right, so we had a pretty good day so far. Uh, yeah, for some reason my combine kicked out of gear that one time. I don't know if it was just barely, the shifter was just in the wrong position and that hit a bump, but he said all of a sudden it just bogged down. Like, not, not even the engine was like under load. It was just... He got an alarm and he said the uh, he, he could watch his RPM, like his con or uh, his rotor speed, just fall right off the map. And he was thinking it was something spun and whatnot. And you know, we were looking at a couple other things. I just go, hey, that's not in gear. And clunk, drops in gear. Life is peachy. Oh God, this thing—it's not the world's 
best ride to begin with, but if you're going dead across, it is not fun. You're always trying to work at a bit of an angle. So that would be Doug up there. That'd be Dad. He's flashing. He'll probably need me by the end here. So I'm just going to park roughly here. And what else? Oh, and my concave motor or concave adjustment motor. It just drives a screw. Uh, somehow it's mounting band just disappeared whether it broke or snapped or fell off I, I don't know but we'll fix that in the morning too 